Hey guys, it's Tom, and welcome to day 247 on my journey to 2000 ELO on chess.com. Intro is a little bit different today because I'm going to be playing a 10 minute game and I'm going to be turning some music on. I just really need to save on some edit editing time today. So hopefully uh, this will cut down on the time so I don't have to edit all, all the pauses. And as a trade off, we're going to play a shorter game. So hopefully you enjoy. If uh, you do, drop a like, comment, subscribe. Let's get into a game. All right. We get a 1789 Then we get the modern defense and kind of like a, actually this is basically the hippo or the Owens defense, I guess. And we're going to play like this, play night out, put the queen here. Watch out for this pawn here. And I'm, I think I'm going to try to trade the light square bishop off. I saw Daniel Naroditsky. I saw a video of him playing basically this exact setup actually last night. I watched the video. So hopefully I can remember some of the, the things he was saying. Okay, I'm going to trade off the bishop here. And then do I want to break? I probably should castle first. Castle. And then maybe I can even go h4. Let me look at the position for a minute. Kind of want to get this knight up here. Maybe even right here. So 95 looks okay. Just to try to maybe, maybe I'll induce d6. I can't really move this knight very easily. Maybe I go back with the knight, or I can even go knight g5. No. Maybe knight d3. I kind of just want to go back and threaten this fork. That's what I want to do. So you want to go f5? I really want to get my light square bishop out, but maybe I put my rook. He wants to put his knight there. Uh, so maybe I... I'll challenge his knight. And that opens up my bishop so he can't put his knight right here. Just pin the knight. I guess I am dropping this pawn if I don't take the knight, huh? That really sucks.
D5. <clears throat> I'm going to play D5. I don't know that this is great, but I just want to kind of open up the center a little bit. His bishop is, is blunted anyway. Challenge the e-file. Okay, so I think I can go here. So you put a knight on c6, that looks good. If he takes the knight, I'm okay with that. So I can take the rook and then I can take the a pawn. He checks, block the queen. But I like that because you can go queen d2. So I could always take and then go G3. Queen D2, Queen B1, or Queen B4, Queen B3. B3. I want to go g3 anyway, but then I don't win this pawn immediately. So I can win the pawn, go back with the queen. I think that's fine. Just trying to see if there's a way i was trying to calculate where he could go with his queen and the best square i see is d2 and i can interesting i can take c7 now what's the plan here queen and then what? Well, I'm just going to play G3. No need to worry about the back rank. Obviously, I can't. I couldn't take on c7. I said that, but I, I didn't mean I'd take it back. All right, so three and a half minutes. Oh, I can take on c7, right? He has a draw. Let's just go there. No need to mess with this. Okay.
Just protect the pawn. Just bring the king up a little bit. So this doesn't come with check. Now I can take pawns. Kind of want to take the queen. Ah. Wait, wait, wait. Ah, uh, what a moron. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? low time situation. I can't stand it. Just knowing that I'm... that I don't have time hard but I'm trying trying as best I can I mean this is just over I don't know, I think I'm losing anyway, but why not let him get all up in the business? I'm sure he has multiple checkmates. This is checkmate. Yeah. All right. Let's take a quick look at that one. And then I want to jump into one more. Just hung a piece. Can't hang pieces and win. Or 79, a opponent played at 86. I swear I hate these modern openings. I do everything wrong. Alright, so... I'm not even worried about the theory, honestly, because if I want to learn theory in this, I'll just go learn some theory. E5 seemed bad because you can just get the knight right here. I don't know why that's good, but... So push the wrong pawn forward. I felt like I was better right here. Yeah, 
Yeah, obviously that. So a knight, t knight takes. I don't know why I didn't take with the knight. It attacks the queen. I was thinking if queen takes, then knight can take here, but it's just so short-sighted. And the rest is history. I mean, you hang a piece, you, you just lose. But kudos to my opponent. Good, good game. Let's play one more. I've been uh, getting kind of lucky, actually, when I get frustrated with my play. And of course, we get d4. Okay, we get a London. Off stream, sometimes I'll play 10 minute games just to kind of blow off some steam. And I've been getting lucky. My opponents in 10 minute games have been blundering a lot. I've been able to win some rating points back. So for this, I am going to go queen out. Because the knight no longer has the c3 square. I hate when they do this. I'll take here. the open A file for whatever that's worth. I have the ability to immediately attack those squares. Yeah, so I can I can go knight h5 and the bishop has to drop back or go to c7, which looks bad. I could play knight b4, knight b4, He's got to move his king, right? Or he has to play knight a6, and then I take it and then do the fork anyway. Then is my knight ever getting out of there? Yeah, the issue is I, I don't know if I ever get my knight out. I like the idea of e6 and then getting this bishop out. So if he brings the knight out, maybe I, then I go knight before, and then he's got to move his king. I think he's going to go to c7, and I want to get this bishop. If he goes to c7, I think I could even, I guess he's attacking the b6 pawn, so it's not all bad. Maybe I should have brought my bishop to e7 first. Yeah, let's do this. And then grab this diagonal for the bishop. Mm, I, I do want my pawn. I do want my pawn on d5, I think. And then maybe play bishop d6. So I can push e5 later. Ooh, now this move looks a lot more tempting. So 
So where does the bishop go? I guess the bishop checks me, but then I just block. And I'm okay with taking with the king. Wait. Uh, I didn't think this through. I'm fine with taking with the king, though. And then he's got the knight check. Ah, uh, this is just bad. Maybe if he checks, I just go back. Just admit my mistake. Then he's got the knight in. Or I can even go king d8. But yeah, he plays the king up. So I think I take the bishop now. That's why I put the knight there, right? Take the bishop. I really don't want the knight coming into to e5, so I'm going to play f6. And normally you wouldn't want to play a move like f6, right? But the queens are off the board and it's kind of turning into somewhat of an endgame and I want to be able to play b5, b4 without the knight jumping in and taking my bishop. I'll still play b5. Get the bishop out, and maybe I just get the king up to like e7 or something. F7. I have to watch for the pushing. I drop this pawn, but then I get this fork, and no, I don't have a fork anymore. I don't like f5, that is for sure. King e7 seems a little bit bad. I need to connect my rooks. I'm gonna go bishop c6, because I, I what I want to do is I want to push e5 without losing the d5 pawn. And if takes, takes is fine. If he takes here, I'm fine there. So I'm threatening this fork, he's gotta do something. And I can actually pin the, the knight, but I don't want to do that. I want, him, I want him to move this knight. about that move. Now I'm thinking about castling. Yeah, I want a castle so I can so this move has a little bit more gusto, maybe. Or I can get a, a rook to the E file now. Or 
Or I can take here. No, I can't take. If he pushes this pawn, I'll take. And then I'll check. And then collect the other knight. If he goes g6, I'm just going to push h6. And then I'll go after this pawn. Yeah, so this, I think, is now good because I can I can take this pawn. Takes, takes. Where's the knight going? You want to push the pawn? I don't know, I want to put a rook across from the king. I think that's fine. And then I want to push d4. That way he's tempoed to move the knight. I can take here, but I also have eyes here. And if he takes the pawn, I just take with a check. I don't think that solves the issue though. Right? I mean, it's fine. You can hop the knight in and I can take, but about. Kind of has to take here. Takes like that. I'm going to try to collect this pawn, maybe. I'd love to get my bishop to the f6 square and be able to push with a discovered attack on the rook. So if I take and he takes the pawn, if I go at bishop h6, how does he get his rook out? I think he needs to take and sack a rook. These 10 minute games, people blunder a lot more if you can survive that in, in uh, <laughs> not run out of time. That's the, the name of the game. It's a lot easier to do that without think like verbalizing my thoughts. Like it's hard. I'm not na a natural speaker. So speaking takes probably more mental capacity than I would like to admit. <laughs> And trying to speak like coherent thoughts about the game while you're trying to like process multiple things. So kind of inverted from last game. I played at 86 this time. Opponent played at 78. Let's see here. Was this still in an opening? Knight b4. Wait, knight d4. Knight b4. So knight b4 is a move here. And then what about here? Is it rook takes a3? Yeah, so I saw this. And I guess I'm up a piece, so even if I lose this knight, his king can't castle. But I was thinking, how am I going to get this knight out? You know, is this any better for me? But I guess it is better. And then now we need, um, they say bishop d3. We would play e6. Try to, okay. 
knight f3. Yeah, so you give the piece back. So you do end up giving the piece back, but I think you end up up a pawn. And this king is not as healthy or safe, I mean. Oh, oh hang on a second. Let's go back to the game. So e6, not good. Of course, knight e4. Yeah, so bishop c7. That's why I shouldn't have played that move, but on bishop c7, I think I would have had to play rook a3. Knight b4 still. Really wants this knight before thing. I mean, I played it, but. And taking the bishop, I think, was fine. So just castling was better. I thought castling was weird, but I guess you take with the rook and you're fine. Yeah, okay. So now castling, not as good. Thought this made more sense to get the rook on the half open file. But king f7. Or fe5. Wait, no. Right here. E4. Here. So king f7. King f7 feels so weird. Like an alien move. King e7 feels better. Neither feel right. The reason why I like castling is because this pawn... I'm afraid... I'm protecting this pawn. It makes way more sense to me than there is an error classifying the move. I don't know what that means. But. King e7. So castles is, is the third, but it, it wants me to move my king to one of these squares, which I mean, the only one that makes sense to me is d7, but then you're running into checks here. Like king f7 being, if, if someone played this move, I'd be like, what are they? What is, it, what is going on here? Because how do you get this rook out without playing a move like h6? Maybe that's the idea. So rook a to e8 is on the list of moves here, but bishop c7, bishop e7. So that's a mistake. H6 is fine, I guess. Oh yeah, take the rook. But th this feels weird too, because are you really threatening to take? I guess you're threatening to take this way. If he pushes, you can he can't push. Okay, that makes way more sense actually. Yeah, that just blunders. He's, he, had to, he had to sack a rook for the exchange. Now king g7. Yeah, so it's just a little bit better for me. Yeah. What about if I go here? What about this move though? Is that good? Not really, right? King g6. Now he kind of has the trade rooks. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, lost one, one, one. Kind of back where we started. But yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Now I'll see you back tomorrow.